field programmable an analog arrays. We really want to try to understand, you know, kind of just overall what do we mean by this concept. We usually mean field programmable analog arrays are like they're sort of they're, they're relatives. <clears throat> field programmable gate arrays. In fact, you can imagine that it may be a superset of that. You may have heard about what are field programmable gate arrays or FPGAs. These are basically meant to be sort of core sort of integrated chips that have a bunch of logic, potentially lookup tables, and then routing in between it that then connect to inputs and outputs on the chip. It allows someone to do design. It allows someone to prototype up a design. It actually allows you to you know, just build a final application of a design. All of these things are done. If I look at this from an analog perspective, what I'm looking at is I'm now actually adding an additional set of analog elements to potentially logic. We haven't really gotten rid of that as well as the routing in the system, as well as various inputs and outputs that could be analog or digital. And it's sort of as core, this is the definition that we look at when we talk about field programmable analog arrays. And you might say, well, I know of a lot of digital structures like this. I can think of Xilinx and Altera, and I can come up with a number of other companies that are pretty well known that have been doing this for decades at this point. At this point, you're thinking, Okay, uh, where are these analog arrays? And you might think of there's a couple, one or two small cases, Anodyne comes to mind, of a couple component, analog components and a couple analog blocks. But what we're talking about now is something much more complicated to much closer to an FPGA perspective. I'll show one example of um, basically on the uh, system on chip structure for the FPA, the very first one of them that was actually published in 2016, um, which basically said I had a large FPA fabric which actually had analog and digital components, all of that together, plus a microprocessor, plus a whole infrastructure for programming, and a bunch of other interesting goodies in there that all sit in one chip. Um, this was a chip actually in an old 350 nanometer process, but had a tremendous amount of capability even given that process. And you can imagine a whole set of ideas and infrastructure where you could take this chip and hook it into a larger, uh, you know, hook it into just something like like a smartphone of you know sort of the time frame, 2019 time frame. And you can imagine um, that you could actually do all of sort of the sort of not only digital but analog computation, and particularly you could imagine doing things from a sensory standpoint. And the key thing for most of this technology is, no, is it's very, very low power efficiency for the amount of computation being done. And the area, as well as the fact that latency is near zero. And these, all of these aspects turn out to be extremely valuable in all of these capabilities. 